Welcome to Stop Fake, the place where we debunk disinformation about Ukraine and set the record straight. I'm Irina Khalupa, and I'll be helping you to tread through this week's load of informational mendacity. Among the fakes we examined this week, Right Sector and Mossad accused of football hooliganism organization in Marseille. I love Russia, a massive campaign that seems somewhat sparse. Nadia Sauchenko misquoted again, and a German parliamentarian gets things wrong because she relies on Russian sites for information. So, let's get to the details. Citing a controversial American website as their source, several Russian websites published articles claiming that the Ukrainian organization Right Sector instigated the massive violence in Marseille last week in order to set up the Russian fans. Allegedly, hundreds of armed right sector members secretly arrived in Marseille in a Cypriot boat in order to provoke a brawl on the eve of the Russia-England game on June 11th. Those involved in fights were dressed completely in black, their faces covered with black balaclavas, and they spoke Russian. Journalists, including those from the venerable BBC, were eager to portray Russians as the guilty party because Western media were keen to demonize Russia, wrote the Russian website Politicheskoye Obozrenye. Politexpert, Aftershock News and Block No True were some of the other sites who republished this version of events. This story first appeared in English on the Veterans Today website. Written by Ian Greenhall, the story's headline screams Ukrainian Pravi Sector Nazis attack England fans in Marseille. Greenhall is a prolific writer for this site, often posting several stories a day. For the most part, these stories are anti-American, conspiratorial and pro-Russian. According to Greenhall, the right sector members who came to Marseille were also involved in the violence in Odessa on May 2, 2014. He further claims that among the Ukrainians on board the Cypriot boat were two members of the Israeli intelligence network Mossad. In a statement to stop fake, right sector spokesman Artem Skoropatsky denied that members of his organization had anything to do with the violence that took place in Marseille. No right sector members were even in France for the football championship, he said. Greenhall never explains where he discovered this information. He never attributes his claim to any source. As proof of Ukrainians participating in the Marseille violence, he posted two photographs. One showing people in masks with the caption, Ukrainian ultras brought for a special purpose. This photograph, however, is from an April 2014 demonstration in Kharkiv. The other photograph used in this story is of a ship purporting to be the Cypriot trawler that carried the Ukrainians to France. The picture, however, is of a Russian emergency ministry's boat that took place in a search operation in the Okhotsk Sea in 2015, looking for a sunken Russian trawler. Veterans Today is a well-produced website that runs an editorial line that is strongly against Israel and Saudi Arabia, but very pro-Iran and pro-Russia. The site describes itself as the true voice of the world's clandestine community. Its articles are widely reposted on the internet, primarily on pro-Palestine and right-wing extremist websites. Russian government-funded cable and satellite television network RT, citing another official news agency, RIA Novosti, broadcast a story claiming that recently released from Russian custody Ukrainian pilot and MP Nadia Sauchenko called for amnesty for Donbass separatist militants supported by Russia. Yes, because there are a lot of stupid guys there who just came to shoot. Ria Novosti quotes Savchenko's response to a question posed by a Ukrainian blogger about amnestying pro-Russian militants. Ria Novosti's claim is taken completely out of context from Olena Bilozerska's conversation with Savchenko. Bilozerska asks Savchenko what she thinks about amnesty after the end of the war. Do you agree that after they lay down their arms, after we win, all those who fought against Ukraine, except for such leaders as Zakharchenko and those that are proven to be implicated in war crimes should be amnestied, Bilozerska asks. Sauchenko replies that peace is necessary, but not on any terms. There's the enemy and the adversary. The enemy, that is Russia, should go home, Sauchenko says. But the adversary can be persuaded. 
but their heads are now filled with Russian world nonsense. We can learn to speak with them, says Sauchenko. It is these people that should be amnestied, Sauchenko said. Nowhere in the interview did she advocate a blanket amnesty for all separatist militants. Olena Bilozerska interviewed Nadia Sauchenko on June 6th during Sauchenko's two-day visit to the war zone. Russian media reported that I Love Russia demonstrations took place simultaneously in 15 American states, and hundreds of people took to central city squares to declare their love of Russia on the Russian national holiday known as Russia Day. The segment shown on Russia's Channel 5 television, however, shows only a small number of people. The television presenter declares that prominent politicians and actors also participated in these American outpourings of Russian love. However, none of them are featured in the story. The official organizer of this event is the Coordinating Council of Russian Compatriots of the USA, which asked people to show their affection for Russia by having their picture taken while holding up a sign that reads, I love Russia. Russian NTV television channel opined that such an event could show the world that Russia is not indifferent to Americans and that the number of Americans ready to admit that they love Russia is not insignificant. The last Gallup poll on how U.S. citizens feel about Russia shows that Americans are increasingly viewing Russia as a threat and as America's top enemy. 18% said they see Russia as America's enemy number one, compared to just 3% in 2011. The only actual American shown in Channel 5's story on the I Love Russia campaign show is a young woman identified as Michelle Fuchs of the Lyndon LaRouche political movement. What began as a Marxist group in the 1960s, today the LaRouche movement is a right-wing extremist movement focusing on assorted conspiracy theories. The movement gained particular notoriety in the last years by portraying U.S. President Obama with a Hitler mustache. Several Ukrainian websites who publish in Russian simultaneously published identical stories about German Bundestag member Inger Höger from the Die Linke party, criticizing Ukrainian parliamentary speaker Andriy Parubi. Die Linke is Germany's fourth largest party and its most far left. It was founded in 2007 on the basis of the East German Communist Party, the Party of Democratic Socialism and the Electoral Alternative for Labor and Social Justice. Inge Höger published her views concerning Parubi on her official website, in both German and English. Linking to two Russian sites, and not to a transcript of what Parubi actually said, Höger writes that Parubi differentiates between Ukrainians and non-Ukrainians, and says that non-Ukrainians have no right to a say in national matters and internal policy debates. By comparing the German MP's claim with the official transcript of the Ukrainian parliamentary session, one sees that what Höger alleges in no way corresponds to what Parubi actually said, and is taken completely out of context. The parliament was discussing changing names of cities in accordance to the country's decommunization law, aimed at removing remnants of communist rule from the country's topography. Parubi said that during the Holodomor, the artificial famine of 1932-33, parts of Ukraine were resettled. But despite these past demographic changes, each community had until February 18, 2016, to independently decide on new names for their cities. This crucial part of what Parubi said was completely omitted by the Russian media that Herger cited. Contrary to what the German MP claims, in no way did Parubi question the right of Eastern Ukrainians to make decisions concerning the names of their cities. That's it for this week. Our video digest is only a small amount of the fakes we debunk every week. You can find much more dissected information on the Stop Fake website. Be vigilant. Look out for fakes. And if you spot any disinformation about Ukraine, forward it to us. For a truth autopsy. I'm Irena Chalupa and this is Stop Fake. Thanks for watching.